the matter? What is it? It's another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure, the funeral wreath. Or Nick Carter and the mystery of the white verbenas. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter made a funeral wreath give him the answer to a cold-blooded murder. But first, a word of advice. As a homemaker, you know what a job it is to keep a home attractive. That's why you've appreciated the new beauty which Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, has brought to your walls. And that's why you'll appreciate Linex Cream Polish, which restores your furniture's original handsomeness in one quick, easy application. Yes, Linex Cream Polish saves one whole step in your housekeeping routine, for it cleans as it polishes without tiresome rubbing. And it removes cloudy dust and polish accumulation, banishes fingerprints, helps to conceal ugly scratches, drying to a hard finish that leaves no oil to attract more dust. So ask for Linex Cream Polish now at your hardware, paint, or department store. Headquarters for all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that covers in one coat. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we look in on Nick's office, we find Lieutenant Riley telling Patsy and Nick about a rather unfortunate experience. Well, it's like this, you see, Nick. Tonight, after old man Bramwell gave me the devil this morning about there being four robberies on his street in three weeks, I picked the best man I got on the force. And I sent him up to Pine Street, where all these robberies have been taking place, and I told him to watch like his life depended on it. Mm -hmm. And then about one o'clock this morning, I got to thinking about it. And I decided to go up there and have a look for myself. Just to be sure, you know. Sure, I know. The demon of the police force goes on the job himself. Oh, now, look, Nicky, you got to let me tell this or not. Sorry, Riley, go on with your story. Well, like I said, uh, I went to Pine Street myself, and I found the cop I'd sent up there who was right on the job okay, and everything was quiet as, as far as I could see. So I asked him how he was making out. Nothing stirring so far, Lieutenant. No suspicious characters around at all. You've been right here all the time, eh, Green? Oh, every minute, Lieutenant. Good. You just dropped around to be sure. Uh, Lieutenant, have you... Got a minute to spare. What do you mean if I got a minute? Well, it's like this. My wife's having a baby tonight, I expect. Oh. Uh, she went to the hospital this afternoon, uh, just before I came on duty. And being as how I'm out here where no one could reach me, I, well, I, I just kind of thought I'd, I'd you like want to a find out. to see if you're a father yet. <laughs> well, yes, sir. <laughs> and I, I thought that if you wouldn't mind watching here a minute, I, I just phoned from the drugstore just around the corner. Only take me a minute, sir. Oh, you sure, sure. Go ahead and phone. I'll wait until you come back. But, but don't stand gabbing for a half an hour, man. Oh, oh I, I won't, sir. So he went off and left you all alone, huh? Oh, too bad. i will say it was too bad. If we'd both been there, we might have got that dirty crook. So what happened then, Lieutenant? Well, I, I stood there in the shadow of the corner house, you see, watching. Uh -huh. And a moment later, I saw a dark figure come out of old Bramwell's house, which was just two doors up the street. I knew Bramwell and his wife lived there alone with, with all your maids, so I wondered who it would be coming out there at that time of night. And what made me even more suspicious, there was no light on in the hall, like there would be if somebody was saying good night to him. So I says to myself, I'll just go over and find out who he is, because I'm not taking no chances tonight. And you went over? I did that. The guy just stood there at the top of the steps. He seemed to be fumbling with, with something in a bag there. As soon as I got up to the house, he turned around and, and hung something right beside the door. But it was too dark to see what it was at first. But as he started down the steps, I saw it was a funeral wreath with a long streamer of purple ribbon on it. How was the man dressed, Riley? Just like an undertaker, Nick. Black gloves and a tall hat and a long black coat. Well, could you see his face? No, not very well in the dark, Patsy. Well, I wasn't looking for nothing like that. So I asked him who was dead. I regret to inform you that Mr. George Bramwell has just passed away. Bramwell, you say? Old man Bramwell himself? Yes, very suddenly. 
Almost in his sleep, you might say. Oh, and he was down to see me just this morning. Looking fine, he was. Yes, very sad. Well, if you'll pardon me, I must be going. Uh, allow me to present you with one of my cards. Huh? In case you ever have need of a man in my profession. A card? Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks. This is J. Atherton Osgood, mortician. Yes. If you should ever need my services, I should be happy to be of service in Jay any way Atherton I can. J. Atherton Osgood. Osgood? There ain't no undertaker in this town where that... Hey, you! Just a minute. There ain't no one... No! Oh. 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 So long, copper. Oh. Oh. Lieutenant, Lieutenant, what happened? Uh, that man, the, the one with the black bag. What? There's nobody on the street, Lieutenant. Uh, what that happened to you? Undertaker, he knocked me down. Uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, that came from Brimwell's house. Uh, Come on. Come on. Uh, Are you all right, sir? Can you walk? Of course I can walk. Let's get going. Uh, uh, what's the matter here, lady? What are you screaming about? Look, look there. Brimwell, with his head all smashed in. Gosh, Lieutenant, no wonder you're worried. I'm afraid to read what the newspapers will say. I can see him now. Lieutenant Riley of the Metropolitan Police talks to murderer on steps of murder's man's home and then is tricked into letting him go. Oh, it is a sorry day for me. Well, Riley, feeling sorry for yourself isn't going to hurt you anywhere. This man interests me. Huh? He goes to commit a murder and takes a funeral wreath along to hang on the door of his victim's home. It's a new one on me. Nick, why don't you give Riley a hand? See if you can't find this crook for him. I think I will, Patsy. That is, if Riley wants me to. Wants you to? What do you think I've been telling you this for? Just to pass the time of day? Very well, Riley, very well. Since you beg me so politely, I'll be only too happy to put my talents at your disposal. Where do we begin, Nick? Now, you say the murderer wore gloves. So you must have left no fingerprints behind him. Yeah, that's right, Nick. And I went all through the Rolls Gallery this morning. And there's nothing there that looks like him. Which leaves us, if I'm not mistaken, with two clues. The funeral wreath and the card he gave you. Uh, neither one of them is worth the tinker's dam. No? Why not? Well, that's the same kind of wreath they tack on anybody's door when there's a death in the family. And you certainly don't think that guy forked over his own card, do you? You're wrong on both counts, Riley. Now, how do you figure that, Nick? Well, take the card first. May not be, probably isn't his own, but it's somebody's card. Look at it, Patsy. It's not printed, it's engraved. Mm-hmm, you're right. If it was a phony, chances are it would just be a printed one. Ah, good morning, folks. Beautiful morning, lovely morning, isn't it? Get a out nice of here, room. you, you reporter. Hi, Johnny, oh. come on in. Oh, morning, Johnny, you're just in time. Now, look here, it? Johnny Winters. If you dare to print a word of this in that yellow rag you work for, I'll... Now, now, your... now, hold on, Lieutenant. It's not a yellow rag, and I don't work for it. I'm a feature writer and not a reporter. So just keep your shirt on, huh? Whatever it is, it's getting you all hot and bothered. Riley's in the spot, Johnny. And the very thought of publicity makes him squirm. Oh, fear not, fear not, lovely policeman. Your secret shall be locked forever within the four walls of my heart. Lovely policeman. Hey, Nick, what's this all about? <laughs> it's a long story. I'll give you the details later. But right now, I've got a job for you, if you have time to do it. Huh? Always at your service, Nicholas. And the beautiful Patsy. Speak on. I want you to get hold of someone who can let you into the public library. Hey. At this hour of the day? I don't care if it is early in the morning, and I don't care how sore they get about letting you in. But dig up somebody who can find you a copy of the Mortician's Annual. The Mortician's Annual? Yes, you know. It's the Undertaker's trade publication. See if you can find an undertaker named J. Atherton Osgood. Oh, J. Atherton Osgood, huh? All right, then what? Come back here and let me know what it says about him. And make it a rush order. This can't wait. Huh? Consider it done, Nicholas. I'm on my way. to the loop. Nick, are you batty? Did you mean to tell me you think that guy's name really was J. Atherton Osgood? Not at all, Riley. But since it's a genuine business card, he must have picked it up somewhere along his travels. This man Osgood may help us get a line on him. That's too much for me, Nick. Uh, you want me for anything more here? No, not just now, Riley. I'll let you know if I do. Well, what are you going to do? I'd rather be shot than do what I have to do, Nick. What's that, Lieutenant? Go down to headquarters and explain to the reporters how it happened that that <laughs> crook got away from me last night. Oh, well, well, good luck to you. And you better put a shamrock over your left ear for luck. Okay, Nick, okay. Have your fun. But you're laughing at this sick man. So long. So long, Lieutenant. <laughs> I uh, don't envy Riley when the reporters get after him. <laughs> well, Patsy, we've got something to do ourselves. Get me the latest city directory. Right here, Nick. I was using it. What do you want to know? I want a list of all the florists in the city. What on earth for? We're going to call on them. 
and see which of them made this funeral wreath and for whom. So get busy. through, Patsy? Just a couple more, Nick. But what a list. Maybe we'll be lucky and only have to call on a few of them. I should hope so. Why, if we have to call on... Hi, folks. Your messenger is back. Johnny. Well? Oh, yes, yes. Very well. I might say okay. Well, what do you mean? Well, I routed out the sweetest little redhead sub-third assistant librarian you ever saw. His name was Myrtle O'Toole. And I got her to open one of the branch libraries for me. Did you get what I wanted? That? Sure. Uh, Myrtle was kind of sore at me for making her lose her beauty sleep, but uh, I soothed her. Oh, yes, I soothed her. Mm, Casanova Winters in person. Johnny, what did you find out? Uh, yeah, Nick, down in black and white. J. Atherton Osgood, Funeral Chapel, Akron, Ohio. Yep. Johnny, Patsy, and I are going out. I want you to go through the files and see what you can find that has to do with Akron. Right, Nick. Uh, about what dates? Say, um... Say within the last year. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure of the dates yet. I finished the list, Nick. You want to go now? Yes, Patsy. The sooner the better. Okay. Get your hat and let's be on our way. Hey, Nick. Where are you going with that funeral wreath? I don't know for sure, Johnny, but I hope to hang it around a murderer's neck before long. So Nick believes the funeral wreath, which the killer hung on his victim's door, will lead him to the killer himself. What can there be about that wreath that makes it such an important clue? We'll see in just a moment. Ever notice how much a shining, clean floor adds to the appearance of any room? All your rooms will look brighter, more attractive, when you protect your wood floors and linoleum with Linex Clear Gloss, the durable coating that flows on easily without brush marks, drying to a hard, tough finish which wears and wears and looks well for a long, long time. Linex Clear Gloss gives a lustrous, transparent finish to all wood or linoleum surfaces in your home, resisting boiling water, hot grease, perfume, fruit acids, even alcohol. And it's so easy to keep clean, for Linex Clear Gloss keeps the dirt on the surface where it's easily wiped away. Its gleaming beauty, its protective durability, make it a standby in thousands of American homes. So get it now. Famous Linex, spelled L-I-N-X, Linex Clear Gloss, the ideal way to protect your floors and woodwork. Remember to ask for it at your paint hardware department store, where you will find all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that dries in one hour. And now back to our story. We left Nick and Patsy trying to find the florist who made the funeral wreath which the killer hung on the door of the man he had just murdered. That's it, Patsy. Just ahead. Uh I, Silverman. I hope this florist can tell you more than the other four we visited. They didn't know from nothing. I hope this wreath doesn't get worn out before I find out who made it. Yes, what is it? Did this funeral wreath come from your shop? From my shop? Let me see. No, it couldn't be from here. All day yesterday, business was very bad. I send out not one single order all day. Only two customers. All right, all I'll, the... uh, I'll take your word for it. But how about the day before? Did you send it out then, perhaps? That's not possible, mister. These flowers, they are too fresh. They could not have been picked before yesterday. Or so fresh, they wouldn't be now. You mean the wreath was definitely made up yesterday? Sure, mister. Couldn't be before yesterday. The I flowers, see. they are too fresh. Any idea who might have made it up? That I couldn't say, mister. It's a very ordinary piece. Could be anybody made it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Come sometime when you want to buy something, maybe? Yes, mister? Thanks, I will. Any luck, Nick? No. I did find out the wreath was definitely made yesterday, but that's all. Well, who's next on the list? Before we visit the next place, I want to call Johnny and ask him what he found. Maybe that'll give us a lead. I found three notices from the Akron police, Nick. Any of them the man we want, Johnny? Well, I, I can't tell. Descriptions are so general, they don't mean much. What are the dates on them? Well, one is dated almost a year ago. One is dated about three months ago, and, and the other is two months ago. I see. Well, not much help there, I'm afraid. And, uh, wait a minute. Two of the men are wanted for murder and robbery, and the other for robbery alone. Okay, Johnny, sit tight. I may need you again. 
So long. So long, Nick. I gather he didn't find anything that will help us. No, not without some additional evidence. Mm, too bad. Well, I'd better call on the next florist on our list. That's the only lead we have that's any good. Mr. Schwartz? That is right. Could you tell me if you made this wreath? Did I make it? No, mister, I did not make it. Well, could you tell me who might have made it? Let me look. Hmm, yes. I could not say for certain, mister, but I am in this business a long time, and I think this was not made by florist. Oh, is that so? Are you sure? Mm, no, I am not sure. But it looks as if it was made by someone who has seen a lot of wreaths like this, but... It's not a regular florist. Someone who's seen a lot of wreaths like it, but not a professional florist. Huh. Funny none of the other florists noticed that. They probably were not as experienced in the business as I am. Or they did not look closely enough. I am sure it is not professional. And, well, uh, another thing. These flowers. Yes? Uh, like a book, I know, all the greenhouses around here. And not one of them grows flowers like these. That I'm sure... Thanks very much. You've told me a lot, Mrs. Schwartz. So long. Goodbye, mister. Any luck this time, Nick? Betsy, I think we've got something. Oh, good. What is it? Find me a telephone. I want to talk to Mr. J. Atherton Osgood of Akron. Thin, sallow-looking man. Thin cheeks. Looked like a cartoon of old man Gloom. I see, Mr. Osgood. And you say he left your employ very suddenly? Yes, it was about three months ago. He went home one night and he never showed up again. No word from him at all. That's the man, all right. Thanks very much, Mr. Osgood. Could he help you, Nick? Yes, Patsy. He says he had a man working for him as undertaker's assistant who left him suddenly about three months ago. Huh? And his description of the man agrees with Riley's description of the man who killed Bramwell last night. So what do we do now? Visit some more florists? No, Patsy. We visit some undertakers. so sure the killer works for an undertaker, Nick? It's logical, Patsy. He apparently came to town about three months ago. But he started these robberies, as far as we know, only three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now, what could be more natural than for him to get a job at the trade he knew, undertaker's assistant? That would give him time to look over the town and decide where he wanted to pull his jobs. And would it also legalize his being in town in case anything came up to question it? Well, we've tried seven undertakers, and none of them had any nice, fresh assistants. Hope we have better luck at this next one. Why, yes, Mr. Carter, we do have a new assistant, a Mr. Carnes, a very fine man, most efficient. Came here about three months ago, but I'm sure he can't be the man what you What does are. he look like? Why, he's about as tall as you are, not nearly as heavily built. His cheeks are thin, and he looks rather like... Like the... old man Gloom? Well, I wouldn't like to say that, but he does. Well, now that you... Mention it, he does rather resemble that character, yes. I'd like to see him. Why, he's not here today, Mr. Carter. He's home packing his bag. Packing his bag? You mean he's leaving town? Oh, just overnight, that's all. We're shipping one of our late <clears throat> clients to Cleveland. Uh, Mr. Carnes is going with the body to deliver it to relatives there. I see. Well, do you mind telling me where your Mr. Carnes lives? Why, I'm not sure, Mr. Carter. I've never become that friendly with Mr. Great Carnes. Great heavens, man. Surely you know where your own employees live. Oh, but he's not one of my employees, Mr. Carter. I'm not the head of this establishment. Mr. Grayson is. He could tell you, of course. Well, where's Mr. Grayson? I'll ask him. I'm very sorry to say he's not here today. Not here? No, he's been called out into the country <sighs> to supervise a very special... All right, all right. And you say you don't know Carnes' home address? No, I don't. But I believe he lives on Oakmont Terrace, if I remember correctly. Oakmont Terrace? Yes, Mr. Carter, but I don't know the number. I'll find it out. Oh, by the way, this body that Carnes is taking to Cleveland, who got it ready for shipment? Why, our Mr. Carnes did. He came to work early this morning in order to get it ready in time, and now he's... Thanks, that's all I want to know. So long. You mean 
mean you really got a lead on the killer, Nick? I mean just that, Riley. He lives on Oakmont Terrace, but I don't know the number. Now listen, Riley. Meet me at the corner of Oakmont and Danbrew as soon as you can. Okay. I want you to identify the man for me when I find him. I'll be out there in two shakes of a lamb's tail, Nick. I want to get my hands on that guy. I'll give him the worst trip. Yes, I know, I know, Riley. But wait till we catch him first. See you at Oakmont and Danbrew in 20 minutes. Just drive slowly along the street, Patsy. I want to see if I can get any clue to which is Carnes' house. You don't expect to find him sitting on his doorstep, do you, Nick? Hardly, Patsy. But one of the florists I visited gave me an idea. An idea about what? About the flowers and that wreath. He said that... Ah, there. That's the house. My hunch was right. You mean the house where Carnes lives? Yes, I'm sure of it. Why, Nick, how can you tell? By the garden in front of the house. Well, what can... Oh, there's Riley pulling around the corner up there. Shall we go meet him? Yes. I want to get this over with as soon as I can. Right. Hey, Nick. What's cooking? Just this, Riley. I feel sure the killer of old man Bramwell lives in that gray bungalow up the street. Huh? I think he's probably in there now. I'm going in and see. You wait outside in case he gets away from me. Oh, but why not let me go in? Because you know him when you see him. I don't. So you wait outside. And you, Patsy, stay down here at the corner, out of the way. But suppose he tries to shoot you, Nick. Wouldn't it be safer to take Riley in? If there's any shooting, Riley can come in and give me a hand. I'll do that, Nick, and happy to get a shot at that rat. Okay, let's get going. Leave your car here, so he won't suspect anything if he should happen to look out the window. Sure. uh, How'd you happen to get on the track of this mug? Investigation, Riley. Investigation and deduction, plus common sense. That don't tell me much. I'll give you the details later. All right, here's the house. Now, remember, stay here unless they're shooting, or unless he gets away from me. Mm -hmm. Then you'll grab him. Right, Nick. Good luck. Well? Mr. Carnes here? Uh, yes, that second door there. Shall I call him? No, he's expecting me, thanks. Oh, all right. You can go right in, then. Thanks. Hey, what the... Your name, Carnes? Yeah, so what? I want to talk to you. Is that any reason for busting into a guy's... I mean, is that any reason why you should enter my room without knocking? Why, yes. I was afraid I might not catch you if I lost any time. You seem to be leaving town. I don't know what you have in your mind, but I'm sure I'm not the one you want to see. I don't believe I know you. Well, I know you. You work for Grayson, the undertaker, don't you? And you're leaving town to chaperone a dead body to Cleveland. That's quite correct. I know a lot more, too. I know you killed George Bramwell last night in cold blood and took 3000 in cash and 10000 in jewels from his safe. It was a pretty slick stunt to impersonate a departing undertaker and leave the wreath in the door. Go on, you interest me. But that was where you made your mistake, Carnes. Because a florist told me that wreath wasn't made by a real florist, but by someone who's seen lots of them. So I figured that the killer who might have worked for an undertaker at some time was you. So you picked me out as the culprit. There's another mistake to you is that card you picked up in Akron. Gave us a good line on you. Of course, going into the undertaking business here was an excellent idea. From your point of view, gave you a splendid chance to find out where the rich homes were located without attracting attention. Is that all? Not quite. I have a hunch that if we were to pry up the lid of that casket you're going to chaperone out of town, we'd find you'd hidden the loot in there. This is all very entertaining. But so far, you haven't shown any proof that connects this wild story up to me. So I must ask you... How about this, then? That homemade funeral wreath was made of white verbenas. A very uncommon flower around here. And there's a fine bed of verbenas growing in front of this house. The only white verbenas anywhere around here. So put on your hat, Carnes, and we'll go out and let Lieutenant Riley identify you as the man who slugged him last night. You can go to... Oh, oh, oh. Sure. You should take better aims, Carn. You really hope to shoot your way out. You got nothing on me. I was just trying to... Whatever you were trying to do, that shot you fired just now was a signed confession of guilt. Yeah, you're all right, Nick. Did you get it? Yes, yes, everything's under control, Riley. There's your killer. Hey, that's the guy, all right. Convicted by his own funeral wreath, which is poetic justice if I ever heard it.
In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. Here's a suggestion. Give your floors a handsome surface in a jiffy with Linex self-polishing wax. The liquid wax you simply wipe on without rubbing or polishing. Linex self-polishing wax keeps all your floors, wood, tile, and linoleum, looking their shining best. Yet it's so quick to use, and it dries to an elastic, satiny finish that wears amazingly and is unusually resistant to dirt and water. It contains the greatest possible amount of genuine Carnauba wax, with no gum, shellac, or resin to chip or crumble. So get it now, Linex Self-Polishing Wax, to keep your floors beautiful the easy way. If your dealer hasn't yet received his supply of the three great Linex home brighteners, he'll probably have them soon. Ask him to save one or all of them for you. Acme will see that he gets them, and you get them, as quickly as possible. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. How about it, Nick? Have you got something new and exciting for us next week? I think so, Ken. In the courtyard of a new and expensive apartment building, the body of a man was found floating in the lily pool. With a large knife in his back. There was practically nothing to tell us who did it or why. But when I got started on the investigation, I found a very confusing trail that took me all over town in unexpected directions. And led right to the murderer, thanks to a costly mink coat, which unfortunately did not belong to me. But, Patsy, you made a nice little sum of money out of that coat, even if it wasn't yours. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> that was some compensation for what I went through. Well, it sounds interesting, Nick. What do you call the story? I call it Death in the Pool. Or oh, the Mystery of the Mink Coat. And that's all until next week. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. Next week, at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled... Death in the Pool. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Mink Coat... Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at this same time and over these same stations by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex Clear Gloss, Linex Cream Polish, and Linex Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. In the Nick Carter Adventures, Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Helen Choate is featured as Patsy. Lieutenant Riley is played by Humphrey Davis. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual. Mutual.